Okay, good morning. Uh, today we are going to discuss a, a new chapter, which is between analog system and uh, digital system. Eh? So basically it's called uh, sampling theory. Eh? And we are going to only discuss uh, uh, the simplest concept and uh, we are going to solve several examples. Um, in ET, I think it's 230, you already know ADC, analog to digital conversion. You may already have done the labs, right? So ADC, DAC, right? You know the chips, how to do this, you know the, the concept. Right? So basically, for signals, we have an analog signal. Analog signal means in time, amplitude, both are continuous. And the next one is for the time, discrete uh, signal time discrete signal is very straightforward right the discrete in time uh, that means the amplitude is still continuous you can take any values in amplitude but uh, the time is only discrete only valid on discrete uh, instant the next one is a digital signal digital signal uh, we know that, for example, zero, once. Right? The amplitude is uh, discrete also. You cannot have 1.5, and you cannot have 1.6. Uh, you have only a limited number of uh, values. So both discrete in time and in amplitude. Uh, the question is, uh, most of the data, right? so for example, especially in ET and CET, are in uh, analog, but if we process it, uh, Microprocessor or computers, we want to deal with a digital signal. So how to convert an analog signal into a digital signal? So step one is convert an analog signal into a time discrete signal. That's the step one. This process is called assembly. So this process is called assembly. From this tool, from this one, then through assembling we get a Better off I write here. This is called sample. And from here, then. and from here, discrete time signal to digital. This is called a quantization. In this chapter, we only discuss uh, the sampling process. The next chapter, we are going to discuss a uh, quantization. Right? Um, Suppose we have an analog signal like this, and this is continuous in both time and in amplitude. And what we want is just sample this, for example, this, 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 this and this. This value, this value, this value here. What I want is, suppose this analog signal is called GT. And the sample data, the sequence, we call this one as a G T with a one. We call this. G T is the analog signal and G T bar is the sample or called time discrete signal. Question is how to get this G T bar from G T? We have hardware, so we know how to do this, okay? Sample and hold all, all these techniques. But uh, today we are going to discuss the theory behind them. One straightforward concept is uh, if I use the analog signal multiplied by this uh, input chain, we know the concept of the rectangle pulse chain right, from previous chapters. Rectangle pulse, rectangle pulse repeat themselves. Now this is impulse, impulse, impulse. So this is called impulse chain. If we use this uh, GT, multiply this uh, impulse chain, right? Looks like that is what we have. Right? So it's very simple. In time domain, in time, uh, GT bar, which is the sample discrete signal, equals GT times the impulse chain, we are going to write as uh, uh, TS, with T, time domain. TS is called the sampling period. Uh, TS is this length. Uh, or 
this length are called the TS. For simplest case, we only consider uniform sampling. That means all the spaces are the same. Uh, the, the, the period equals, uh, equals TS. So that's it. That's the timing of representation of the discrete value of this. Now we are going to look at some details. <laughs> we know before from 323. Any periodic signal can be represented by <coughs> a linear combination of uh, cosine and theta functions. Huh? This one is periodic, so they are the same thing. We are going to rewrite this one as GT times, and if you still remember, rectangle post train before, that rectangle post train can be represented, yes? What is that word beside time? This one? No, beside time. Besides time. It's this one? Time domain. domain. This one? Time domain. M A I N. Or oh, just T D, right? <laughs> this one can be represented by a series of cosine and theta functions. Eh? And we do the same thing to the impulse train, and this one will be equal to I just uh, First one, I write this. So that's why you cause I ignore this first. Right? So I write this part only. This one equals a 2 over TS, and you cause a half plus a cosine omega ST plus a cosine 2 omega ST plus a cosine 3 omega ST, and so on. They are infinite terms. Omega s is related to Ts by omega s times Ts equals, uh, equals 2 pi. Eh? So if we are given Ts, then we know omega s. So omega s here is, uh, is known. Eh? Uh, this impulse chain can be represented by a combination of a cosine and same function. Same function is here are all equal to 0. Eh? So this is this. Then definitely we need to multiply by gt here. Eh? That is what we have. Right. We distribute this term inside, so let's see what we have. That's Ts, right, the first term, and times gt, then plus this one Ts to here, and gt times uh, cosine omega st, then plus Ts2, right, gt times uh, cosine 2 omega st, and we have uh, infinite terms. Okay, now look at this one. What is this? Uh, that is the original analog signal, but with the sum like again here, right? time constant. Usually we do not care about the constant here because you can use, always use an amplifier to change this big or small, that's fine. Right? So this term we have. What is this? And now you should recognize what, what's this term? GT, which is the analog signal, cosine omega CT, what does this look like? Give you a signal gt, you multiply by cosine function. What is this? This is an AM signal, right? It's called a double sideband suppressive carry. How about this one? Same thing, right? Gt times the cosine, this double the frequency. So all the following terms are the same, just the double sideband suppressive carry or modulative signal. Right? Now, let's look at the frequency domain. So frequency domain says so this g omega is bar. Right? Uh, with capital G, right? Capital G, right? which is a function of frequency. Let's see what is this. We take the Fourier transform at both sides. This one gives us this. This one gives us uh, okay, Ts, this is a constant. And Gt, we assume Gt gives us uh, G omega. Right? That is the spectrum of this. And G bar here gives us uh, G omega. Time domain representation, frequency domain. Time domain, frequency domain. They are equivalent. So this one, of course, will be G omega. Right? It's very simple here. And this one here. And I will write TS here. <coughs> Do you still remember what is the spectrum of this uh, double sideband suppressed carrier signal? Anyone still remember that? All right. Suppose I give you a baseband spectrum like this. Uh, you multiply by the cosine function, what is the modulated signal? What is the spectrum?
right? This is Mt. Then I multiply by cosine omega ct, I get the spectrum of the more electric signal. And then I can draw this approximately. Right? Centered at uh, zero, shift this one to the omega c and negative omega c, and the amplitude reduced to half. Does it make sense? Right? So this is based on after the modulation, you get this two uh, shifted at the center of the omega c and the negative omega c, the amplitude each one reduces to half. So this is called double sideband. Uh, this one bandwidth is VRP, this one is 2B, double sideband and suppressed carrier. There's no carrier information anymore here. Right? So that means this, this one is half, this one is half. But we have two here, right? So I will put one over TS here. So this one is G omega minus omega s and plus omega s. So I represent this one, I represent this one. Make sense? All right, now the next one will be one over TS times G omega plus minus omega two omega s. plus minus two omega s, and definitely we have infinite terms. So I will uh, summarize all this together, so we can see this is one over ts, so one over ts, and we are going to use the summation, and uh, we can use n equal to zero to infinity, of negative infinity, uh, to positive infinity, then this part will be g omega plus n omega s. When n equals 0, this gives us this term. When n equals 1, <coughs> this gives us the plus term. When n equals negative 1, this gives us the minus term. And plus 2 and minus 2, plus 3, minus 3, give us all the terms here. <coughs> Does it make sense? All right, now don't get lost. What we, are look, what, what we are doing here? We try to look at what the spectrum of uh, the discrete sample data look like. Eh? So this is, let's see what it looks like. So now let's draw the spectrum of this. This one, the first term is simple, it's just uh, like this GM, eh? first term. The second term, pair, the second pair is uh, centered at omega s and negative omega s and like this. Make sense? All right, the next term will be, where's the next pair? Center, yes, center the two omega s and negative two omega s, okay? and also we have this two. Then the next one pair is here, then we have infinite terms. Okay. From here, looks not very clear, but now look at the spectrum. This one is the original G omega. This one are the copies or shifted copies of the original spectrum. The sampling theory, uh, the idea is uh, we are given this analog signal, and we sample this, and we try to store these uh, discrete values in the disk, right, in the, uh, any storage. Then later time, the objective is uh, to recover the original, to reconstruct the original analog signal from this uh, sample data. For example, the CD disk. Mm -hmm. The music is uh, analog, it's continuous. You store this one in CD, that is a disk, digital. Uh, but the later time when you play the CD, what you want is still want the perfect, uh, or constructed the analog uh, music. You do not want here the one zero, one zero, all these things. Uh, so we have this uh, spectrum here. What we want is we still want this uh, G omega. Now, question is, do we have that information, which means the original analog signal in the sample data? Look at this. This one is the original, right? What is the spectrum of the sample data? This, 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 and this. What does that mean? That means the original analog signal is here. You sample that, that means you take only limited values. You have the original information here, and you have even 
a lot of more copies of that. That maybe is not easy to understand, right? So the real analog signal has infinite, and if you want to store this perfectly, then you are going to use infinite storage. You cannot store perfect uh, analog signals. You can only sample this. So you use limited storage, but that information has exactly the original information and even more. Okay, now the question is how to recover the original information from the sample data. You look at this, not speed forward. Now look at this one. Can you give me an idea how to get once we are given this GT? Okay, how to get this GT? This is analog, this is discrete sample data. You are given this. How to get this one? Look at this here. And I can tell me. Okay. Right? Yes, low pass filter. Okay. This is a low pass filter. You cut off all high frequency components. That is what we have. And this one is exactly the original GT. Yeah, or maybe there's a there's a coefficient here. Right? The amplitude is reduced. But that is okay. We don't care about too much about this. So now, any questions? That is the sampling theory. And I want you to summarize. We have an analog signal. You sample this, and you pass through the, you pass the sample the data through low pass filter. You get the original analog signal. That's very simple, right? But look at this. I give you one hour of music. How many samples are you going to sample? You may think, okay, I want to sample as much as, as many as possible. So maybe give me better quality later time when I recover that, right? Oh, I can just sample once. Then my story is very small. I don't need even a test CD. I need only one sample to represent that one hour of music. So which one is better? Which one works? For to storage, for process, we want to store as small, as little as possible. But for quality, we may think we want as many as possible. Right? So look at this. The idea here we said we use a low pass filter, right? Can we always use a low pass filter? Right? Let's think about this one. If your this F omega S is not that big. The first one is here, original, and you shift it to the omega s, but this omega s is not large enough, it's only at this point. Right? So this omega s is big, but this omega s is small here. But then the copy will be here, and this same thing, the copy will be here. Now you know this spectral overlap. Right? So what we have for this part, you are going to get like this, like a, right? like this. These three add up together. And definitely you have another one here, here. So that's totally messed up. This mess up is called alias. Uh, alias. Alias. Eh? Yes, so the spectrum, they add up together. So even you have a perfect low pass filter, you can still not get, you cannot get this one. Uh, so there's a condition for this. So what is the condition for we can use the low pass filter to perfectly reconstruct the original signal? Right? That means this part needs to be higher than this part. So they are going to be a higher gap in between. Make sense? Okay, now this one must be larger than this one. So what is this? What's the value here? This one is omega s minus uh, we said that the bandwidth of this original equals uh, equals b, right? And we use this omega, so this is two pi times b. And this part will be <coughs> omega s minus two pi times b. So this value is is, is this one here. And what is the value here? This one equals uh, just two pi times b. Right? If I write it in this way, so this is only two pi times b. So this is the value. Here. If we want to use a low pass filter eh, to reconstruct the original signal, this value must be less than this one, so we can have a gap. So you can put the low pass filter cutoff frequency at this point. 
Otherwise, they are going to have agency. So this one must be smaller than this. Huh? Some special cases, okay, they can be equal. Like in this case, here, here, and you come over here, okay, that's perfect, no problem. But sometimes, most of the time, you are going to use only the less than, right? not equal. So this condition must be satisfied for us to use a low pass filter to reconstruct the original analog C. Now, what is omega s? We saw this one, omega s will be 2, 4 pi over b. Right? Move this one to the answer. Or if I write in hertz, this one divided by 2 pi, this one divided by 2 pi, so less than right? or equal to 2 b. So, uh, Right, so, oh, sorry. This one, go this one, right? Greater than. Because I'll move this one to the left hand side. So this one is greater, greater than this. Right? Make sense? It's good? So what does that mean? That means if we want to use a low pass filter, this is sampling frequency. Sampling frequency means how many samples we can get, we, we sample in each second. Sampling frequency must be at least twice of the bandwidth. What is the bandwidth? Eh? The highest frequency in the signal. This is called a Nyquist. Nyquist. Frequency. Huh? Any question on that? Is it somebody's name? Yes. Yeah, yeah. He found it. Huh? This is called a uh, uh, Nyquist frequency or Nyquist rate. Okay, so there are different names, but they are refer to the same thing. Yes. The minimum samples in each second we need to sample that. Uh, from this sample data, we can perfectly recover the original analog signal. Okay, now you know the CD disk, right? right? There is a, as a bad, now you don't use the CD disk, right? maybe somebody of you never saw a CD, right? You use only an MP3, MP4 online, right? Use soft copy. But if you have a CD at home, you look at the back, there's a sampling frequency for this. Right? That means, for example, usually the CD is one hour of music. Right? So, Later time, we have an example to show how to calculate how much data. Why it is called like 650 uh, megabyte. Why is that large? Small, not small, not large. Okay, there's a reason for that. Anyone knows the sampling frequency? 44.1 44. 44 kilohertz. Okay, perfect. Anyone knows why 44.1? Okay, give you a hand. 44.1. The the four is just like a, give you some extra. Okay? Uh, the error required is 40. So 40, that is something frequency. In each second, you need to have 40k samples. Why is 40? Because uh, the B equals, uh, what is the B? Bandwidth of your music. This one equals 40. What is your B? 20k, right? Okay, that is the. The frequency, the upper frequency that the human ear can hear, eh? it's 20k. If you can hear, hear more than that, maybe you are, you, you are like special. I don't know, okay? <laughs> but you are going to be aware sometimes they have like an ultrasonic noise, no one can hear, only you, then you are going to have, it, have trouble. But anyway, the human voice, all the music, usually the maximum frequency is 20k, so that's why we choose a 40. K to as the sampling frequency. <coughs> uh, but in that case, you are going to have like this, you are going to have a very harsh requirement for the low pass filter. So you prefer, okay, I make it like this. So the engineers design low pass filter, they can use like this. So that's why 44 instead of 40. Does it make sense? Alright. This, uh, we don't have a telephone line, right? you use a cell phone. So suppose before we have a keyboard telephone lines. Anyone knows what is the bandwidth for that part? The landline. Definitely we don't need 10k, right? Because that high definition sound is is ignorable. So we don't need that. 
Anyone knows that? In engineers, right? In technologies, you should know this. That's telecommunication. Okay, it's like a 3K or 4K. That means my voice, your voice, usually is like 3K, 4K. And girls maybe have 5K or a little bit higher, high tone. But usually, 3K or 4K is enough. So if you want to sample that signal, how many samples do we need in each second? Suppose 3K. The frequency is 3K. How many samples do we need in, at least in each second? Wrong way, right? Double the frequency. So 6K. So in each second, you need to have 6,000 samples. Mm -hmm. Then, later time, you use from these 6,000 samples, you can perfectly recover the original voice. Any question on this? So now, we know Nyquist the theory, uh, and this is the theory, so it works. Uh, and we know how to, once you, give, you are given this sample data, you know how to reconstruct the original analog signal. How to do this? Just pass through a low pass filter, right? Looks from here, yes. But the, that is in frequency domain. In time, for example, when you process this, for example, the CD disk, Right? Your MP3 or CD player. What you have, you read in is only one zero, one zero. All this analog data. How you can implement this low pass filter to do this? For example, I give you uh, all this data. Right? You use process this with a computer. You only work with this data. You do not actually have that uh, hardware low pass filter. Does make sense? You only work with the data. I give you all these samples. You work it, you add, multiply, no matter how you do it, the mathematical operations. You do not have that actually RC or anything with this low pass filter in your computer. You do not use that. You just use the software to do this. Now that means we need to find an algorithm that can deal with this data directly to implement that uh, low pass filter corresponding to in the, in the hardware. So we use software. So how to do that? Now this in time in frequency domain, we need to go back to the time domain. Then we because when you process data, it's always in time domain. Right? You cannot process data in frequency, right? You need to process it in time. So if I give you these samples, you are going to work in time domain. So how to work with this, this discrete samples to get this uh, uh, GT? Right? That is uh, what we are going to discuss next. We are going to start from here. Low pass filter, that is in frequency domain, right? And this one here is a B, right? and is 2B, is 2 pi B, uh, if we write in omega. Right? Uh, in hertz, it is B, but in this one, it's negative 2 pi B in this side. And this gain must be Tf. Remember, in the coefficient here, there's a value over Tf. So we want to perfectly recover that, so we need the gain of the low pass filter to be Ts. So Ts times 1 over Ts equals 1. Step by is we are going to represent this uh, rectangle low pass filter with a function. Uh, this function we can write a rectangle function or some like a pi function, uh, no matter, there are a lot of names, okay? If you're interested, I can read this. Uh, uh, the uh, rectangular function, uh, rectangle function, uh, pi function, and the gate function, and the unit pulse function, or the normalized box car function. Uh, there are a lot of names for this, but they refer to the same thing, just like this. So this one has a height, uh, which is Ts again, and there's a width of this. Uh, this, this rectangle, right? So this one, 
the variable is omega, so omega on the top, this one will get full pi. Uh, oh no. This TF will be here. Right? Like this one. And this one, rectangle, the variable is omega, and the width is 4 pi times b. That is how we represent this one. So this is the frequency domain. Right? In frequency domain, and we know the g omega is equals uh, g omega, the, the one we want, equals uh, the g omega bar, all this, 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 all this thing, right? And this one is g omega we want. All this together is g omega bar. And multiply by this uh, ts times the rectangle and omega over 4 pi. That is how we apply the low pass filter. Right? You have this one, which is all this, then multiply by the low pass filter, which is represented by this. Any question on that? Huh? That is, we just use a mathematic representation, uh, math, uh, formula to represent what we just said here. Uh, we use low pass filter to this, that's it. Uh, original, this is sample the spectrum times the low pass filter. Okay? You get what we want. Hopefully. This is in a frequency domain. We can, we, said we can only work data in time domain. So how to write this one derived on this GT? How to get this one? Everybody has taken 323, right? In time, we use multiplication. In, in, frequency, in frequency, we use, a, okay, in 323, we said, in time, we use a multiplication, and in frequency domain, we use a convolution, right? Still remember the convolution concept? Anyone have you in 3.23 before? Eh? Convolution. Right. Or in time is convolution, then in frequency it will be multiplication. You are going to use this. If you work in this engineering part, no matter control system or anything, you are going to use this concept for your whole life. So better memorize this. Yeah. That's the that is the key for transform analysis. Right. In time, for example, if we are going to deal with the convolution, okay, we don't do that. We use Laplace transform to convert both terms into a Laplace transform, then we multiply. Eh? Once we get the result, we use the inverse Laplace transform. That's all we discussed in 323. Eh? Uh, hopefully, you, uh, I hope you still remember this. Here, the same thing. So this is multiplication in, in frequency. So in time, it will be a convolution. That means this one will be g bar. We convolute with uh, this this low pass filter, right? But this low pass filter is in frequency. Right? But we need to convert with the time domain. So the time domain, this one, the Laplace transform of this give us a, a sync function, right? Tf the sync. F I N K L C. Right? Sync that will be omega over four. Right? So now we have a new uh, function called the sync function. Sync x eh, is defined by sine x over x. That's easy, right? Sine x over x. Or this one is in math. Eh? In engineering, in information technology, you already said sync x is defined by sine pi x over pi x. Eh? It's called the normalized sync function. But anyway, uh, the, the concept are the same, just different skills. So we take this one as an example. Right? This one equals what? And if x not equal to zero, right, that's defined, right? Just say x or x, so that's no problem at all. 
How about if x equals a 0? That is sin 0 over 0. That means 0 over 0. And you need to, how to find this one? You need to take the limit, right? That is in KL2. So the limit equals a, if you still remember, that equals 1. So if x equals 0, this thing function equals 1. Otherwise, that is just sin x over x. If x is not equal to 0, then we can always find this place. If it equals 0, then that equals 1. If I draw this, the sink function looks like this. Right? You can see, actually, it is just a sine function, but with the reduced amplitude. Right? This is just sin x. Sin x means sine function. But sine function, at this point, it must be like this. Right? And also, like this way. So for posit positive part, that is like this, but with the reduce the amplitude. But for negative, this thing x is negative. If x is negative, this one is negative. And x is also negative, negative cancel. So they have positive, that means they are symmetric. Uh, you only draw the right hand side, then you mirror this, get this. Right? When x equals zero, that equals one. All others just define like this. So that is a single function. What is a single function? It is the Laplace transform of uh, this rectangle. This is this. Right? So if you have a filter, low pass filter, in frequency, the time domain waveform of that filter looks like this. Huh? They are equivalent, they are the same thing. They're just Laplace transform. If this is in time, uh, this one will be in frequency. If this one is in frequency, then this one will be in time. Right? You already know that before. Maybe you, you are not aware of this. For example, ask, uh, let me ask you a question. In digital field, you are going to transmit this uh, rectangle. This one is in time. You are going to transmit this. How much bandwidth do you need? This is zero. This is one. This is zero. Right? You transmit one and zero. How much bandwidth do you need? Right? You need to find out the bandwidth of this signal. Right? This is in time. And correspondingly in frequency, this is its bandwidth. So what is the bandwidth of this, this signal? All the way goes to infinity. Right? So that means you need the infinite bandwidth to transmit this uh, rectangle pulse. Can we do that? Or can you do that? What system can give you an infinite bandwidth? You cannot, right? We don't have any system that has infinite bandwidth. So what we have is uh, the high frequency is gone, so we only take the lower frequency part. That means you are going to have a rise time, and you are going to have a fall time. So that is the rectangle policy you are going to see on our series program lab. You cannot see the perfect because this one needs the infinite bandwidth defined by this one. Right? Any question on this? Okay, now let's go back to here. This rectangle or rectangle or low pass filter in frequency looks very simple. You just multiply this. But uh, as we said, we can only operate the data in time. So in time, we are going to have this function, or this function. So you are going to deal with infinite data. Uh, so how to do this? Now, we are given a formula, it's called a this function, this formula is called a, uh, with Krashenov's interpolation formula. And interpolation formula. That means, if we are given those, uh, we know this data, right? These are sample of the data. If we know this, we can, from this single function, to reconstruct the original time domain signal. Right? 
So the formula will be E cos X R E cos sigma A equals net infinity to positive infinity and X N which are the and sine this is the sink function eh? pi times t minus n pi n t over t then over pi t minus n t over t We are going to use this interpolation formula to reconstruct the original analog signal from the sample data. <laughs> Next one, we are going to use an example to show how to actually do this. Huh? Any questions about this formula? Can you understand every part of this formula? So which, for example, what is Xn? What is Xn? What is XR, T? That's the frequency of the Okay, so the original analog signal is XT. Right? And we are going to have this sample the data. This is called Xn. So for example, this one is called X uh, negative 1, negative 2 doesn't matter, right? This one is X0, and we start the time from here, right? This one will be X1, this one will be X2, right? So all are discrete value, right? In discrete system, as discussed in 323. So we use square parentheses. And this one will be X3, this is X4, and possibly we are going to have infinite sequence to this side and infinite to that side. So that's why n from negative infinity to positive infinity. And this x n. Question on that? So we know this one, we need to be given this part, right? These are from the sample data. What does this r mean? This r means the recovery, right? This is the original x t. If we are given this sample data here, we are going to construct a new analog signal. For example, like this. I just made one. So this one is called XRT. Suppose. Reconstructed time domain analog signal. The ideal case is this one equal to this one. That is what we want, right? The music you hear in the, in the music hall is equal to the one you hear in, at your home. So that's the reconstructed from the CD player. That is what we want. Okay? Any question on this? Okay, what is this N here? That N is this N, right? Is the time. So for example, N equals 1, then this one equals 1. When N equals 2, this N equals 2. So this one, we know this, because this is the summation for all this way. What is T, capital T here? is the sampling period. Uh, how fast we sample this uh, analog signal is called FF. That is the how many samples in each second. And one over FF is called T, is called the sampling period. So once we know this, like in 44.1K, so that TS will be equals one over 44.1. So we know that, right? That t is known. Okay, pi is constant sine function from this one. So this one actually is still a sync function, right? This is the sync function. Now, what is this t? What is the t? This t is this t. Is the time that we want to 
have the reconstruct of the original analog scene. That means, for example, like here, eh, I have this is the original XT, okay, this is on the sample the data. What I want is where what is your reconstructed value at this point? So this suppose this is one, two, three, four, right? What is your, for example, x r point five? I'll give you only this, for example, this values. What I want is the analog. Right? For example, here. You are not given, but I want this one here. So x r reconstructed when t equals to point five. What is your reconstructed value? That is the best. So you just plug t equals to point five in this example. Does it make sense? Question on this. This t is the time that I want the reconstructed analog signal. Okay? If I want all of them, then you need to give me all t. I give you a t, you give me this value. I give you a t, you give me a value. Question right. on this. About this formula. Before I ask you one. Give you one minute, think about this formula. Right? If I give you an example, can you do by yourself? If you understand this one, right? No matter what you, for example, you, you write a code or something, you, you like coding, right? So I give you a formula, you should code this formula. You need to understand every part of the formula. So now the question is any part that you cannot, you don't understand. I'll give you this formula, I'll give you some discrete values. Right? You could write your code, C++ or no matter what. You, can you do that? So do you have uh, everything you need? You're scared of my quiz, right? Any questions? So we discuss all these quantities, and you know this one, right? What does that mean? This is the input of your system, of your code, of your algorithm, of your function. What is this? This is the, the output of your algorithm. What is this t? This t, I need to tell you. I want the value at uh, 0.5, t equals 0.5 second. Then you, after your calculation, you give me that value. I want the t equals 100. Then you just plug the t into here, then you get this value. Any question on this? No question? OK, now let me ask. If you want an uh, ideal reconstruction, that means what you hear at, at your home is the, in, in the music, uh, music hall. So that's exactly the same thing. That means xrt will be equal perfectly xt. That is our objective, right? If this one is satisfied, suppose we use this formula, we can't do this. Now, in this example here, what do you expect as r when t equals zero? Huh? For example, you give me this code, I will check, right? I cannot, this code is very long, for example. I don't want to check your, your grammars. So I just give you several examples. Huh? And uh, I look at your output. If your output is correct, then I will say maybe correct. So now I'll give you this input. When t equals zero, your output, what do you think you, you are going to have? If everything is good, what is your output? And I can answer this, get half point. Right, let me write. Uh, if perfect reconstruction, then this one should equal to what? I 
equals one. You're halfway. I know where your one. Your one means your the sink function is one. Right? Don't look at this function because this gets you confused. You just use this thing. Look at here. I'll give you this value, this value, this value, this value at times zero, n equals zero, one, two, three, four, or give be a lot. I want is when t equals zero, what is your <coughs> constructed value? What it should be? Zero. I'll give you this uh, x, this is n equals uh, zero, n equals one, n equals two. This n equals one means uh, I cannot tell you. If I tell you, then that's the answer. So this one means uh, at ts, right? Because we have something period. So this is at t. This one means at uh, t equals two ts. This one means at t equals three ts. This one means uh, t equals uh, zero ts. Last chance. Zero, zero. What? What's zero? Zero. Zero? It should be T S. Yeah. Zero, I can only say halfway. You may correct, but what you said is wrong. What is zero? What do you mean zero? What I want is this value. You mean this is zero, right? What does that mean? F is zero? I think N equals zero. Right? That zero is means if N equals zero. Not my value. So, anyway? Anyone? Three. Two. Okay, you got it. Any question on this? Look at this. Your constructed time domain is this. If at this point, if your reconstruction is correct, what is the value should be? Because I give you the value at this point, x zero, that is n equals zero, so that is, I'll give you this one. You know the value at this t equals zero is this. If you construct this one, your value needs to be this. Otherwise, you can give me a wrong result. So at least at this point, you need to be correct, right? That make sense? Hello? Yes or no? <coughs> you want another one try? No one? You want? Okay. Only for you, right? Because no one others want this. I want to reconstruct the value at t equals 10 ts. If your problem is correct, only you, right? What you should get? The input is 10. That's 10. Right? That's perfect. Because I want to get 3, 4, 5, 6. And some way I said the value is t equals 10 ts, then because this value is already given. Sample the data at that point. So you should give me this. Does it make sense? So you should get this. Right? Now, question is, is this formula give you the right answer? Let's see. For example, if t equal to zero, what do you get here? You plug t into here, let's see. t equal to zero. Right? So when t equal to zero, When t equals to zero, that means x r zero equals uh, the sum of all this and this x n times sin uh, sine function pi t is zero, right? Because this t equals zero, zero minus this over t, so that is negative n pi n t 
over t, which is uh, t t cancel. So that's the n. That's the part here. So that's negative n, negative n times the part. Make sense? That is on the top. You simplify, plug into t equals zero. Right. On the bottom, this one equals zero. This one t cancel. There's an n here. Okay, negative part n. So that will be sine n negative n pi over n pi. Okay, this n, this negative is gone, so cancel each other, right? So what we have is sine n pi over n pi here. And with this x, okay, so I will simplify this. It's already simplified, right? Like this one. And n for infinite terms. So let me write one by one, right? So that's equal to x uh, negative 1, and we have something before that, so I ignore that. Right? Negative, negative 1 times, that means when n equals negative 1. What is on top equals sine negative 1, negative pi, right? Now what is still here? Right? Then over negative 5. That is the, this term. We have some terms before that, so I cannot write all of them. I just write this one. Okay, then next time we will be n equal to zero, which means x zero, then times on the top that is n negative part, which equals zero. And on the bottom that equals zero. It's good? Alright, then the next one will be x one times on the top that will be sin one pi over one pi. The influence we have next term 2 times sine 2 pi over 2 pi. Is everything good? Now tell me what is this? Sine 2 pi over pi over 2 pi equals what's this? Sine. Sine pi is a periodic with a period of 2 pi. Any multiples of pi give us 0, right? Draw this. Okay, this is one zero here, this is pi, this is two pi, and this is a three pi, and four pi. So for every multiple of a pi, this sine function will be equal to zero. So this one equals zero. This one equals zero, right? That means no matter what your x2 is, we don't need to care because the weight equals zero. That means x2 has no contribution to this one. How about the x1? What is this one? Sine of pi, zero, right? This one is gone too, which means x1 has no contribution to this x0. How about this one? Zero two, zero. right? Sine zero over zero, what is this? That is a single function. Equals what? Equals one, right? A single function, remember this, a single function here, like this, huh? this is equals f is zero. Single function equals one. So sine zero over zero equals one. All right, that equals one, so that means this one equals f is zero. So that equals f is zero. How about negative one? Nothing. Negative two, nothing. So all values except this one has no contribution to your recovered data. So definitely your recovery will be equal to this. And from our experience, yeah, you need to be like this, right? Because if you want the perfect recovery at this discrete point, it must be equal to the given value. Otherwise, you're wrong. Does it make sense? And if you plug into t equals to 10 ts, you get the same thing. This one will be zero, this one will be zero, this one will be zero. Only when t equals 10 ts, that give you one, and that give you only like this. Any question on that? So everybody is happy with this, right? What we want is a recover the original analog signal. You only give me several discrete values. Sure, we know they must be equal. How about this one? You have a formula here. You plug in t equal to 0.5. How do I know your recovery will be equal to the original? Right, let's get an example here. Right? 
example is suppose we have a give you an analog signal, right? No matter what, I have only two values. The two values are x zero equals one, x one equals one. That's it. Very simple, right? I don't give you infinite numbers, I give only two. All others equal to zero. We only have two values. When, right? when a equals zero equals one, when a equals one, that's equal, also equals one. And uh, I have some other conditions. This sample is called uh, sampling at the second, at each second on the second. Then each second I sample one, but exactly on the second. That means I start from, for example, t equal to zero, at zero second, I'll give you one sample. At t equals one second, I'll give you another sample. Two seconds, I'll give you another sample, and so on. I sample once each second and on the second. But I have only two values, that's all. All others equal to zero. My question is, what is my original analog signal? Hmm? There's not, there's not enough data to tell. I could, could give you only two values. Eh? You know, you already know what we are talking about, right? The information is I have originally have an analog signal like this. I sample the it each second on the second. Each second sample one uh, give you one sample, but also on the second. So when t equals the negative one second, I give you one. When t equals negative two, I give you one. Negative three, I give you one. Zero, one. Okay, one second, one, two second, one, and so on. But after my sampling, I found there are only two and zero non-zero values, which is this and this. All others equal to zero. What I want is what is my original analog signal? Can you do it? My question is, suppose that this one is quiz for you, can you do it? Maybe. What are you going to do it? Formula is here, right? So if you have a test, if you have a cheat sheet, that's why you should write down that one. Right? Okay, let's do it. What is T? We said sampling, sampling per second. So what is T? One. Right? Let's see what is the F the R0. Let's see, right? Because although the sum, uh, the, the, the sum equals a lot, but we have only two values. So I have only x0, then times, uh, uh, what is here? Uh, this is 0, this is 0, OK. Then you plug into this, and you get uh, uh, this equals uh, uh, sine 0 over 0, then plus x1 times 0. Right? So what you have is uh, equals one. Because this one equals one. This one we don't care. The VT one. It's obvious, right? If you cannot get one, then you're in trouble. Right? What is XR when T equal to one second? You do the same thing. That one must be equal to F0 times, uh, you can imagine, huh? that's a sine pi over pi, which gives us zero, right? Then plus X1 times, uh, Sign, okay, yeah, here is 0 over 0, right? which gives us 1, so okay, that equals 1. So again, okay, equals 1. So now I recover the value, and t equals 0, give us 1. When t equals 1, give us 1. Right? Sure, no problem. Now the question is, what is r.5? That is our interest. Right? That's nothing. You have the formula, you just plug into this one. So t equals 25. So x0 times, uh, let me simplify this formula. Eh? This formula will be equal to the sum xn here. Let me, let me write here. x, the sum xn here. Eh? This one, sign t equals 1 is gone. This one equals to uh, 0.5, so pi 0.5 minus uh, uh, n t this over pi t uh, 0.5 minus uh, uh, n t equals 1, t equals 1, like this one. Right? 
This formula will be reduced to this for our example. Make sense? All right, now let's see we have here xr.5 so just equal to x0 times sine right, pi 0.5 minus 0, right? This is 0, so that's just 0.5 here times, and this one here, pi 0.5, right, just like this. Right. Then plus x1 here times sine here, this is 1, this is 0.5, so negative uh, 0.5 pi, and on the bottom, negative 0.5 pi also. Right? This is half pi, sine of half pi equals 1. This one equals uh, half pi, so okay, we, what we have is uh, 2 over pi, this, this equals 1, this equals 1. Okay, plus 2 over pi, so equals 4 over pi. That is our result from this formula. Right? So we claim the value when t equal to 0.1 equals uh, 4 over pi, which is uh, 1.3 or something. Right? If I like to draw the, the analog signal, it looks like t1, right? this is 0.5, so it's like 4 over pi here. Looks like, a, oh, that is your, I guess, right? that is your original analog signal, looks like this. Right? If you calculate the point five, okay, maybe here, point seven five, maybe here. So that's if you can point time by time, then you can draw this one, right? So that is our recovered analog signal. <coughs> Any question on this? You know the process how we do this, right? Now the question is, are you sure that this is correct? Because we never know that information. This is the question for you. Are you sure this one is correct? Or, in another word, when this is correct, when this is wrong, you might have some condition, right? So, is your recovered data correct or not? When your data is correct, when is your, this is wrong? Anyone can tell me? Go back to the very beginning of the class, uh, of this, this today. Sampling theory. When you can get the correct data, you can correctly reconstruct that. When you cannot, if your sampling frequency at least the twice the, the bandwidth, then you get the, definitely you get the correct answer. So our sampling frequency equals uh, one, right? So if your original signal frequency bandwidth is less than 0.5. That means our sampling satisfies that condition, so you are good. Make sense? So maybe your signal looks like that, just like this. So this frequency is less than 0.5. So you are good. Because your sampling frequency equals 1 here, but your bandwidth is less than 0.5, so that satisfies this sampling theory, so it's good. How about if your bandwidth equals, for example, equals 1, or equals or, or equals 10. What does that mean? That means your signal looks like a, right? the frequency is very large, right? Okay, you sample at zero, at one, see? It's still, oh sorry, not zero. This is zero, this is one. So this is time t equals zero, this is time t equals one. But your frequency is very high. You can still get one and one. Now you know this one is wrong, right? Because uh, in between, that value can be zero. How can you see equals uh, four over pi? Because in this situation, our sampling theorem is not satisfied. Does that make sense? So if you want to use the sampling theorem or the uh, Whitaker channel interpolation formula, you need to make sure your sampling theorem condition must be satisfied. That means your sampling frequency must be at least twice the highest frequency for the bandwidth. If yes, then your reconstruct value is perfect. That is what is supposed to be. If not, then we don't know if it's correct or not. Maybe correct by accident, but maybe not. Then most probably it's not. 
Okay, next one is uh, we are going to discuss, uh, right? we don't have time, but uh, you can read by yourself. Uh, the bandwidth of the sync functions, because that is important. Right? In the homework, we are going to practice a lot. Right? So, for example, if I give you a rectangle like this one, right? correspondingly, this uh, sync function looks like this. We know there's bandwidth here, there's bandwidth here. So, I want to ask you, this is supposed in time. We know there's an infinite bandwidth for this signal, right? Is the spectrum looks like the sync function they are pairs. So what is the bandwidth of this one? And if you say infinite, yeah, correct. But we want to approximate. So the definition of the bandwidth of here is uh, this one. Right? First one, we need to find out this length. We call this tau. Right? Then the bandwidth, this bandwidth here is b times tau equals one. So this b is uh, the bandwidth of the sync function. So how you do it? I give you a sync function. You draw this. You find this one, the now, eh? because that's the first of the now. Eh? Means the first of the zero. We have a lot of zeros, right? Zero, zero, zero. So you only find the first one. That is called the first of the now. This eh? and uh, or you can just multiply by two because they are symmetric. Or you can find the next this one. Then this width is called tau. We define this as tau. Then the bandwidth of this signal is b, which must satisfy b times tau equals one. Any question? You said that's one equals one. I'll give you a sync function. For example, sync uh, one hundred t. Give you this one. Sync. Eh? How to, find, how to find the bandwidth of this one? You first of all, you draw this function like this. You don't need to actually draw it, just imagine, right? You find the first zero here. What's the first zero? We have 100 t equals pi. This is the first zero, right? So you can find this t. This t is from here to here. This is the first now, right? And you double this, that's give you the width of this tau. So this tau is just actually this 2t. And this is tau. You know this, right? The bandwidth of this signal is b. And b times tau must be equal to 1. So by this way, you can find b. Does that make sense? So give you a sync function. You find the first now first. Then you multiply by 2. That gives you the tau. Then you use a 1 over tau. You get the bandwidth. Okay, that's it for today. Uh, read the lecture notes and uh, do the homework, right? <laughs>